video was sponsored by One More and they've got us checking out their Evo earbuds today. They are available in at least white and black. Ooh. And it looks like they have compacted up their case quite a bit. They boast 28 hours of playback time on a single charge, eight hours on the earbuds themselves, the other 20 in the wireless charging case. They've got Qi charging. They can also charge via USB-C. They have antimicrobial ear tips, which is a pretty useful feature. I mean, I'm not usually that concerned with getting microbial infections from my own ears, but if you were to share, which I would never recommend, I guess that could be a concern. They offer two different types of transparency mode, one that's just a basic transparency mode and another that actively looks for voices. And they've actually got multiple tiers of active noise cancellation as well. So in terms of feature richness, these are looking pretty darn complete. They boast six microphones for rejecting ambient noise when you're on a call. And that's actually where I'd like to start because that's a big problem that I have with my current daily drivers, the AirPods Pros. Because of the highly subjective nature of audio products, I should lay out that even though this is a sponsored video, I still can't say anything I don't believe. So if I were to say these are in spite of looking kind of deep and bulky, extremely light and comfortable, then that would be because that's what I actually think. And I do need to kind of, uh, Mark, you're gonna have to try and kind of catch me over here because I need to lie down. Really for me, the main mark of a wireless earphone's comfort is not necessarily day to day. And these are, these are, I mean, these are just kind of really solid there. There's no way they're coming up in my ears, just even with the stock tips right out of the box, really liking that, really lightweight, but can I lie on them? Okay. Wow, okay. On a hard armrest, maybe a little bit of a pressure point right here, but I looked at these and I thought, wow, these are gonna be really uncomfortable and they are totally not. Included in the box are five different sizes of ear tips. You can see them laid out here on the table in front of me, as well as a USB-C charging cable, and of course, the wireless charging case itself. Let's get a quick size comparison in here. Apple still sets the standard when it comes to super compact charging cases, but you can see that one more has actually made up a ton of ground. And when you factor in that they've actually got greater battery capacity, then at least there's a justification for it, unlike how it used to be. They will fit comfortably in what I like to call my earphone pocket. Slide in and out pretty easily. I was worried that this textured finish might be a little bit too textured, but actually it seems, seems not bad. You kind of get under it and boop, there you go. And if we want to go any further than this, we kind of need to install the app, which conveniently I have already done. Mm, let's see how well their magnets guide them into, oh, okay, that's not bad. Not a lot of fuss, that's nice. Every once in a while you'll encounter ones where it's just like kind of finicky to get them in place. So if I'm just, okay, I wanna be just kind of careless. Let's so chuck them in there. Yeah, not bad actually. Love how painless it is to pair these days. Oh, and they're Bluetooth 5.2, which means that they support multi-device. Pretty sick. Really, 10 millimeter dynamic driver plus a balanced armature driver for punchy bass and smooth mids. I don't know if I have seen a wireless earphone design that's hybrid, dynamic, and balanced armature drivers. Maybe I have and I just forget because I've been doing this for a long time, but. Okay, put the headphone in a comfortable position in the ear, turn the talking mic towards the mouth and leave the earbud uncovered. Oh, so there's your main microphone right there. And I guess this one and this one are both for ambient sound rejection, which makes sense. You're gonna need an internal mic if you want to uh, have any kind of chance of active noise cancellation. Okay, listening modes. Touch and hold for one and a half seconds. I do wish that that auditory feedback for changing modes would happen once it registers. Oh, wait, it does eventually. So are there three different modes I'm cycling through? Okay, I wish it was a little faster. I wish it was one second. Okay, so let's hear transparent mode. This is full pass through. Hi, how you guys doing? I'm doing great, yourself? I will say compared to the XM5s that we just looked at, oh sorry, the over the ear, so WM, WH1000 XM5s. One more is not doing as good a job of naturally passing through my surroundings to me, but to their credit, my voice in my own head sounds way more natural and it's far less off-putting. I also don't have voice enhancement on yet. 
So can you guys hit me with a voice again? Hi. John, John, you want to talk to me at all? I think you're a swell guy. You got nuts? Oh my God, don't suck up. <laughs> I do think you're a swell guy. I don't detect much difference between them, but both of them are absolutely usable. It's nice to have easy access to just no active noise cancellation. That can help you save some battery if you just want to passively block out noise. They are IEMs and there's no actual you know, air channel through them or anything like that. So they will naturally block a lot of the surrounding noise. And then ANC is gonna take that to another level. By default, they're on strong. And I can tell you that quieted down basically all of the ambient noise here. No strong pressure sensation. But even their strong is not the strongest I've encountered. I can say that much already. Now the thing about clapping is that any ANC is gonna have trouble with that, but you'll still be able to take some of the edge off of it. I will say that it is surprising how far we've come for anything other than an Apple or a Bose product for active noise cancellation performance. Like we are gonna need to do a serious ANC Roundup. Once we've got our dummy head working and all of that, guys, check out that LTT video. It's coming very soon. We're gonna be benchmarking like $40,000 dummy heads for testing acoustic equipment. Sound ID. Oh, this is that personalization thing. Choose the sound you like. This is a really cool way of doing this. So it plays around with the EQ a little bit and then you just A, B, choose which one you like and then it kind of dials it down and dials it down. We're at the point now where they are <clears throat> extremely close. Okay, let's see what my sound signature is. Obviously that could be genre specific, but they actually do a pretty good job of providing at least a handful of different genres for you to choose from. It's now personalized. Okay, uh, well, what does this mean? Are you gonna show me what my like EQ is? Oh, well that's lame. Okay, well there's a bit of feedback that I would provide. I'd like to see what kind of EQ I ended up choosing. Sure. How about some ABBA? That is a really cool way for any idiot normie to go through and dial in a customized EQ. Because the reality of it is, between, between two similarly priced headphones, a lot of the time you can make up a lot of the difference between them by EQing too much bass out or by EQing down some of the, the sparkle and the highs. And so by just having this simple little setup process that's really intuitive, these just sound really good. How much do they cost anyway? 170 bucks. Okay, so they're priced right up there with what you would expect for a pair of feature rich wireless in-ears. But honestly, like I see a ton of value in that particular aspect of the software more than just about anything else. Like they sound great because I tuned them to make sure they would sound great to me. I ended up making it all the way through the video before remembering to do this test call to check out the mics. So, hey, John, are you recording the call? Yep, I am recording. Well, I would ask how I sound, but honestly, it's kind of irrelevant because we're gonna let the audience decide for themselves how I sound. You sound great though. Thank you, you sound fantastic. Thank you. I mean, in fairness, there's not actually a whole lot of like ambient noise around me right now though. Do we even really have anything that makes a ton of noise at the moment? Mark kind of makes a lot of noise. Mark, okay. That's not the kind of noise though. It has to be like traffic noise, like that kind of thing. Okay, here's something. I can, I can rattle this chain. Okay, so I'm talking to you while I am raising a bay door. I don't know. I don't know how much this is making a difference or not. Okay, cool. So that's that's kind of what it's supposed to sound like. And then whatever Jono has on the other side is what it's managing to subtract from it. No, they're not IE 600s, which we checked out recently. Guys, you can check that video out if you're looking for something else to watch. But they also aren't intended to be. They're, they, they don't have a wire. It would also be really nice if it spat out the EQ and then you know how it says, hey, you should listen to some music and, and you know try it out? So it should spit out your EQ, then allow you to play some music and fine tune things so that you can find something that works across the different genres that you like. I definitely didn't leave enough in the highs for music like this, for example. Still, tons of potential. Just like you have the potential to subscribe. Thanks one more for sponsoring this video and thanks to you for watching. See you soon.